Good afternoon. Uh, uh, I'm going to talk on one of the uh, use cases where I've used uh, with Docker, but uh, but I'm using Docker here, but I, I can mean like Rocket or uh, any other thing which may come up in future, but I mean containers in general. Uh, Galera, okay, let me start. I'm from Parcona. Uh, we do MySQL development and uh, cluster development, backup tools and a lot of other stuff associated with MySQL. Ah, so this is what uh, Galera means in uh, the language in which it was developed. Uh, in, uh, in Finnish, I think, yeah. So that's what it means. It's a collection of people uh, all rowing in unison and uh, it stands for synchronous replication. That is all the nodes which uh, uh, are identical in nature uh, with respect to the data. So what is Galera? It's, it follows, uh, it's like this. It looks like there are multiple MySQL nodes and there is a, a, something called a Galera plugin for the right set replication API of MySQL. And uh, it follows uh, something called eventual virtual synchrony, uh, which is a kind of, a, which is a type of synchronous replication uh, with other two being uh, one copy equivalence and, uh, uh, and the Paxos style, uh, whatever that is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so th th there are a few concerns here uh, that I've listed. Uh, and the replication here is uh, data centric rather than uh, rather than your uh, as uh, usual async replication that you have in MySQL. And yeah, the, I've written that the causality and synchronous. Uh, the difference being that uh, when we say causality, when and when we say synchronous, when we say synchronous, it means that data is present on all the nodes, but it does not. We do not say when it will be uh, present. It means. Uh, Suppose you are doing a query A followed by a query B and you want the query B to require query A on all the nodes, then that's when you do something called a causal read. The causality needs to be maintained. That's what it is. So I just wanted to uh, uh, separate the difference between the two here. So that's why I mentioned it here. And the last factor is the latency, which is very, very uh, important uh, in, in case of asynchronous replication because people want data on all the nodes, but they don't want the necessary delay there. And uh, this, is, this whole replication is based on uh, optimistic concurrency control rather than a pessimistic one. What happens is, uh, suppose you do a write and there's a transaction, uh, it goes to remote nodes. This node does not wait for that transaction to, uh, for all other nodes to acknowledge it because the end-to-end -end communication in a WAN or a LAN environment can be quite uh, expensive. So it, this does not wait for that. What happens on the other end is, suppose there's a conflict between what it is doing locally and it, what it's getting from remote uh, end. And this is a process called certification and if there is a conflict, the local one is aborted and the remote one is applied. So that's how the optimistic concurrency control model applies here. And that's how a high throughput is ensured. Anyway, that's about uh, the short description to Galera, the synchronous replication behind MySQL. Uh, now uh, I'm going to talk about containers and I'll come back to that later. Uh, okay, so basically what uh, do containers provide as uh, all the talks before me have uh, detailed, you know, all the namespaces, the PID, namespace network, namespace mount and user one. Uh, out of those things, I think uh, I prefer, uh, I really like the concept of network namespaces because it usually, uh, because each Galera node requires three set of ports, three ports, and uh, if you want to set it up on the same box, for instance, uh, it's very, you need to juggle with, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, you need to uh, mark the range for each of them and it, it, it can become tiresome. Uh, having network namespace eliminates all of that. And then, yes, C groups. C groups uh, are used by Docker mainly for uh, metrics, from what I understand. And yeah, as I said, good fences make good neighbors, right? Uh, for a clear separation of uh, CPU, disk, and uh, other resources. And uh, the, for the manipulation of the uh, containers, uh, usually, uh, I mean, there are, there are places where uh, your usual uh, container injection does not do, then that's where you can use like NSenter or uh, NSenter is the command that you can use and that's what I've used for injecting uh, something like uh, QDisk, uh, traffic control QDisk into a container. And that's, uh, that was required for one of the uh, QA tests that we do. 
and these are the other uh, syscalls that can be used like unshare for, for a new namespace for a child and other things. And uh, crew as uh, the LXD talk in the morning mentioned, uh, crew can be used for migration of the containers while uh, ensuring uh, high availability. And that is something which is very important for us with Galera containers because uh, high availability is one of the goals for a container, for a cluster, sorry. Okay, uh, this is just I'm uh, mocking the downtime whale that Twitter used to show. So this is like the uptime whale, you know. Anyway, uh, so the, the, why, why did uh, we choose Docker and uh, about Docker? So yeah, simplified networking was one of the main things that was uh, required for us. Uh, I didn't, uh, I was earlier using QMU, KVM and uh, with DNS mask and it was not fun to play with all of the nuances of the network because I'm not good with that but again it's, 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 it's very complex and you know I didn't want to get into that. But again there were other things like uh, volumes uh, that I can uh, share between multiple, contain multiple nodes and, uh, and, the, and the storage options like ButterFS and what is available uh, newly in uh, 3.18 kernel that is OrlyFS. Uh, which also allows for page cache sharing and stuff like that. Something that you can use only with uh, uh, use as KSM with QMU KVM. KSM being kernel uh, same same page merging, which is which can be quite uh, CPU intensive as well. So as I said, b batteries are included, and you know you can use different batteries if you want. Uh, okay, so here I've written it as symmetry in replication and deployment that's what i have written here so so synchronous uh, i needed uh, so, so synchronous replication is uh, with galera is nothing but a, there's a symmetry in replication there is all nodes are equal there's no leader there's no slave uh, nor there is any leader election or nothing like that all nodes are the same they they can write uh, you can write to any node and read from any node you want uh, so that's what we required is uh, symmetry in development as well. So uh, by when I say symmetry in development, uh, uh, I needed to generate uh, containers just from a single config uh, Docker file or any other configuration file and, you know, uh, generate any number of containers from it with a definite configuration. Possibly with the cow semantic, copy on write semantics. Yeah, so, uh, so since I talked about both, so now I'm talking about how uh, I'm using uh, all of them. So one of the things that we require is uh, elastic requirements. Suppose when I'm doing benchmarking or testing or deployment, there, there are times when there is a need for uh, uh, changing the amount of containers deployed on a node or a, on a hardware device and uh, that's what I mean by uh, elastic requirements. And the second one is fast scalability. That is also something that's very important to us. Uh, especially with the uh, testing, so, uh, where I can, I want uh, to start like 20 containers, 20 uh, nodes uh, in a short period of time, and uh, that's where the performance aspect comes into picture. And uh, packing for saturation, uh, with this, what I mean is what, whatever uh, the uh, Mesos or uh, Docker Swarm have, wherein you can. Uh, ensure that there's a where you can define the pack, packing of the containers on a node to ensure the maximal saturation of the hardware and a snapshot transfer is something that is used uh, when you want to uh, transfer the state of a node to a new node and that is uh, simplified uh, a lot with this when there are copy on write semantics available with the, the docker and others and runtime instantiation is, uh, by the, by that i mean that even though you have start uh, you have uh, created uh, docker images through a docker file it's possible to uh, change the parameters at runtime either through environment variable or through uh, through the command line itself and that is uh, uh, quite helpful uh, especially when you want to do something like ld preload and stuff like that Uh, okay, so why, uh, again, why is, uh, we are using is, so I wanted to keep it minimal and inheritance, uh, by what I mean by inheritance is suppose we have images for release, experimental and testing and uh, I don't want the docker file for uh, experimental to reuse whatever is there in the release one and I want to instead use it and build upon it, so that's, that's what I mean by 
uh, inheritance and extensibility and by immutability I mean that uh, uh, whatever the docker uh, model ensures with its layers that is when you change something you get a new container uh, and uh, as you keep on changing you get you, you don't change the existing one instead you get a new one like a functional approach to uh, uh, to containers and the registry is also very uh, important uh, in that uh, it's uh, I've written the go get uh, the, in the go you, you can just mention a URL and as uh, Brandon talked about it with his image discovery uh, that was uh, that's, that's also very important so that we can we have a single point from where we can fetch images and uh, uh, and do stuff with it uh, so there are some uh, uh, proof of concept uh, uh, material available in the GitHub URL there, and the Docker images are over there. Uh, so, in the networking part, uh, linking is what Docker provides uh, with it. But nowadays, they are thinking of doing it, doing something with Open vSwitch. Uh, I think Socket Plane is the one who is working on that. For uh, because with linking, what happens is uh, you, uh, there is a node, and when you link the node to it, you know it's it's a one direction, it's uh, unidirectional, and that is something uh, that can that is something which is good for client-server uh, paradigm, but not for a cluster where you need it to be uh, bidirectional, and that is something I uh, change with using a DNS mask container, my own. So uh, and passing IP addresses to the DNS mask container through a volume and hopping it regularly. So that's, that, that's what I had to do. But nowadays there are new, uh, newer solutions coming into place. One of them is Open vSwitch, this Weave and others. So, and that is something I am considering. Because networking is, some, is one of the main things with the cluster because uh, with the bad networking, uh, you can uh, get poor latency and uh, uh, a cluster write or read, actually a write, is as fast as the slowest node that it has got. So that's important here. Uh, some of the issues that I ran into it while uh, doing it is, uh, you know, I, uh, the, these are some of the current issues. For instance, uh, if you have an IP address for a container and you, you Docker restart it, it comes up with a different IP address and uh, that can cause issues uh, when there are uh, membership, membership changes in the cluster. And uh, currently, you, uh, even though you can plug in a lot of other stuff, you cannot plug in DHCP CD, at least not that easily, into the uh, cluster. Because I, I wanted to use DNS mask as the DHCP CD so that I can have deterministic IP addresses that I earlier used to do with the QMU KVM. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well. Uh, anyway, uh, so and this is another thing, the socket interface, you know, Docker exposes, uh, when it exposes to the host, it exposes it through a port and a, a, a tuple of IP address and port, uh, whereas I needed a socket interface, like a unique socket interface, that is something that is required. Currently what I'm doing is I'm using SOCAT and, uh, uh, you know, doing that bridge. Because I require that for with something like Sysbench through which you can uh, you can spray your load through a, in a round robin fashion through all the sockets. So that, that a socket interface there can be helpful. And uh, as I said, uh, linking uh, is not that uh, you know there are there are different patterns available like ambassador pattern and stuff like that. But those were not ideal for uh, uh, Galera cluster. And this is the last one that uh, one of my colleagues mentioned when I was talking to him, when I was introducing the concept of containers to him. He said, what happens if you build on, what happens if you, uh, uh, build on a kernel which is uh, new, like uh, 3.18, which has a new syscall, something like get random, uh, and uh, you, you transfer that container to an older kernel, but uh, with the same user stack that it is carrying, what what happens there? I mean, what will be the behavior there? And 
or, or in case of some cyst calls with the degraded behavior in older kernels but not with the, in the newer kernels. So the, kern, the concept of kernel ABI even though it's considered uh, pretty much stable across you know uh, over a longer period is not something that's addressed uh, in uh, docker or any of the container specifications that I've seen so far and that is something that needs to be done. Otherwise, uh, uh, since the concept of, uh, since Docker, etc. are new, so we, we may not be seeing it, but over the years, we may start seeing that issue. Uh, uh, anyway, these, these are the use cases where I'm using, uh, where I'm doing it. I'm doing something like uh, chaos testing and stuff like that with the multiple Docker containers, like 20, 40 or st uh, stuff like that. And, and uh, that's one of the use case. The benchmarking is another one, uh, though for benchmarking the hardware is much better than what is used for testing. Uh, of course this production deployment, rolling upgrades uh, for a cluster you need a high availability so uh, with the rolling upgrade what uh, we can do is uh, we can start another container on the same device and uh, bring this down and bring that up with the same set of, uh, with the same volume you can pass to both. So that is something which is very, uh, which is a very interesting use case and very helpful as well. And for rapid deployment, this is something that uh, uh, I was, uh, for new for new joinees in our team and others, this is what helps us because, well, because uh, sometimes they want, they have a tree, a code tree and they want to test it, but they don't want to know about any requirements that they have to install. So what uh, this allows for us is uh, uh, to start a bunch of containers, one for like Sysbench, one for DNS mask and other for Galera cluster and uh, without any, uh, we, on a bare host to be able to do all kinds of testing, just give uh, with a code tree and uh, build and even doing the building inside the cluster, it's, uh, inside the container itself. So uh, doing uh, rapid development uh, is, uh, rapid development and testing is one of the use cases where we use it the most. Okay, and uh, yeah, packaging testing is another that uh, we are using it for, uh, though in, in uh, case of uh, Docker you cannot do like system D inside it, at least not uh, trivially. And for that, we were uh, we are looking at something like a system DN spawn or some something like that because that allows for it, and you can actually convert between the Docker images and uh, you can run it, you can export it into a system DN spawn instance. Okay, this is the orchestration part. Currently, for uh, in the, our project, we use Fig because it's quite uh, simple and it's well integrated into Docker. I know there are other solutions, but Fig is very much uh, integrated. And there's a Docker comp Compose coming up, and which is essentially a, a, a rewrite of the Fig. And currently, it is in Python, but they are, I think, in future they'll move it to Go. But Fig itself has some limitations. Uh, for instance, I use fig scale, which allows you to uh, define a minimal YAML file and you can bring up any number of uh, uh, containers with that, with the same configuration. But it does not allow for something like a substitution variable and uh, stuff like that. But, so that is the limitation that I'm facing there. Uh, and uh, Mesos and Docker Swarm, the, that is another thing that we are, I'm looking at for uh, and uh, Flannel and Kubernetes, uh, Flannel I think uh, w uh, got recently into CoreOS in, in its uh, own container, I believe. And uh, that's, uh, that should be helpful for uh, deployments into AWS. Uh, the deployment, yeah, these are the ones we, uh, we have been looking at for deployment. Uh, one is the EC2 which was recently announced in the Amazon conference, AWS conference. Uh, Google Container Engine already has it, and one of the first to have it. And uh, DigitalOcean provides uh, for core OS con uh, containers. Joint has something called Smart Cloud. Who contains the containers? This is a picture of those uh, Russian dolls, you know, you can put one, one inside the other. Uh, so this, uh, I'm talking about the environment here. So there are many available. Uh, one is the Project Atomic speaker of whom is sitting here uh, with its RPM OS tree and stuff and Core OS, Apache Mesos, Docker Swarm. 
Apache Mesos and uh, uh, Swarm are not necessarily the complete environments, but they provide uh, you to manage it. And this is a specific case that I wanted to talk about uh, is with uh, CoreOS. One of the nice thing about CoreOS that I found was uh, the, uh, that you, you didn't have to learn anything new if you had already built your uh, built services for your uh, cluster with systemd, systemd services. And it also provides uh, HCD, which is a distributed uh, uh, coordination mechanism and fleet for deploying services on other nodes based on various criteria. So this is something that I required for uh, bootstrapping a cluster because bootstrapping is uh, something that is uh, not symmetric. That is, you need to bring up a node and only then you can add other nodes. After that, it's uh, symmetric, but bo bootstrapping is the initial part. And, uh, and for that, uh, you can use, uh, with etcd, you can use something like queues for storing the, uh, it provides the concept of queues, which you can use to store the IP addresses of every new node in the cluster. But the, 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 the test and set feature is something that is very uh, helpful here because that allows one a node to see if there is already a, a, a bootstrapped uh, node, otherwise bootstrap itself. And that is very important. And the, and the concept of sidekicks, wherein uh, you have uh, Docker containers, which you are starting with the fleet CTL service, but uh, you want to do some external things like, as I am saying, like bootstrapping, so sidekicks can be used there. Yeah, and uh, others are like LXC, LXD, which uh, there was a talk in the morning about that. System D and spawn that we are considering for uh, packaging testing because the concept of uh, in it, uh, because system D and spawn allows you to run a system D in, inside it actually, and uh, that is good for our uh, testing of our R uh, RPM packaging. And uh, rocket, as as the talk was about in the morning again. And uh, this is the concept of security. Uh, oh, uh, it's from Plan Nine, uh, Glenda, I guess. Yeah. And what you see is what you get to attack. That's uh, uh, what I mean by that. And the security that we need is provided through like uh, uh, S-word, SecComp, which, uh, which I don't think is in integrated into any, uh, any yet. I don't think Docker has it yet, but having SecComp will be very, uh, very good. And the capabilities which are already there now since a few Docker versions, because running a privileged container can be uh, bad thing and the verifiability up to bare metal and th that is also something which is very very uh, which is a requirement for us which which is not there actually uh, till now but uh, which should be uh, but it is in process from what I read anyway so that's about the talk uh, thank you We have time.